What do you see in this picture first? Is it the sea? Is it the people? Or you see the sand, the buildings? And what about the plants here and the trees? In 2004, when tsunami hits Indonesia, and together with climate change, inside uh, the rising sea level, this has raised the consciousness of people on the value of the beach forests and then the mangroves. For the last 10 years, we have seen the major typhoons that hit the country. And from over the years, we see that the values of the damage caused by this typhoon is increasing. Again, if you look at the pictures here, what do you see? In all the damaged areas here, we see here that there is the absence of natural protective barriers, such as mangroves and beach forests. But together with the combination of changing environmental conditions in urban encroachment makes the coastal dunes a globally endangered ecosystem. So I introduce to you the beach forest species, the forgotten and ignored resources. Why forgotten? If you look at their history, majority of our ancestors started to settle in coastal areas, in rivers. Well, obviously for the reason that it is the mobility, the most available mode of transport was by, by water. And that's why we have people like Tagalog or Tagailog, or we also have Sulu Tausu or Tausu or people of the current. And because of this, vegetation along the coastal areas was first to disappear, followed by the mangroves and other forest types. This scene is seen everywhere, the absence of the beach forest. This is an aerial view of Iloilo City. Even in the remotest islands, many of these are already devoid of their beach forests. In some areas, we see also extreme damage done to the coastal areas in terms of industrialization, as you can see here. Because of this, the early laws, the beach forests are not well studied, as other types of forests and therefore not familiar to the average Filipino. And in fact, it is not even reported in the rarely Philippine forestry statistics. Now, but what is a beach? So when we speak of the beach, technically, it's a, it's a zone of loose material where that extends from the lowest, inter, uh, lowest water mark to the point where we have the start of the vegetation. So that's technically the beach. Now, if you look at the beach, there are so many materials primarily that are made up of sand. In some islands, we normally apply the term sandy beach for these areas. But what are the other materials that we find that are found on the beach? This includes your silt, we have clay, the pebbles, your shell fragments, cobbles, the boulders, and some coral debris. So the beach may be a combination of the cobbles or the pebbles, the sand, in different composition. So you can see again here, you have the cobbles and pebbles, and in some cases, just a dominance of the boulders. Now, so we now treat the beach as a living system. What is a living system? So a living system is a set of parts interacting to achieve a certain goal and made up of the following elements. One, it has elements or components, both the living and the non-living. Secondly, there should be information-based relationships or interactions that eventually would lead to the function or the purpose. Now, when you speak of a system, so the bit system will now encompass that from the up to a depth of around uh, 40 feet down to up to the vegetated area above the sandy portion and will extend even all the way up to the watershed. And that is what we call the entire beach system. And in fact, we have this as an example also that the beach is again as part of the bigger coastal ecosystem. Now, so the beach and the dune forest are in an area that is very dynamic, one of the dynamic landscapes with what we call shifting with winds, shifting with uh, incoming waves and storm tides. And the sand here is formed as a result of the wave action that brings the sand 
all the way to the shoreline forming the sand dunes. So this area acts as a buffer to winds and waves and at the same time a shelter for communities in the hinterland. But today most of this is gone. The area is also a very important habitat for animals and plants including the nesting of the sea turtles. However, the sand dunes are considered to be stressful environments because of shifting sand that abrades the vegetation, the salt spray, the soil that is having extreme temperatures with low water holding capacity and poor nutrient, particularly nitrogen content. But yet, we see there is a proliferation of a special group of plants in this area. So now, what is a beach forest? So we define the beach forest as a mixed association of littoral creepers, shrubs, and trees above the high tide level and may merge with an agricultural land or upland forest. To illustrate that, there is a mixed association of the littoral creepers, the shrubs, the trees growing above the high tide level that may extend all the way to or integrate with agricultural or the watershed. So illustrated here that they may merge with an agricultural land and or upland forest. Now, the beach forest is also known before as the supra-tidal species that have been referred to as the beach jungle by the early explorers of our islands. Basically, we can categorize the two major areas where we collected the different beach forest species. One is on a sandy shore, the other one is on rocky cliffs. Now, example would be this sandy shore, sandy rocky beach found in Carles. You see the dominance there of the cobbles. Then we have a wide sandy beach with creepers, and as you can see, we have there the creepers that are growing on a wide sandy beach area. Then the other type are those that are narrow sandy beach with trees immediately, and some are those that are found in areas with sandy beach but no adjacent mangroves, while others could be with sandy beach adjoining a fringing mangroves in front. The rocky cliffs are those found on steep vegetation not reached by tidal waters. And these are usually some could be gently sloping and portions of the lower portions would be reached by tidal waters. So illustrated here would be the rocky cliffs, while this one would be the gently sloping ones and the lower portion would be reached by tidal waters. Now, so here is a summary of the different sites where the beach forest species could be found. Bansinis in 1976 categorized two beach uh, categories of the beach flora, namely one is the, the Pescapre formation and the second is the Barringtonia formation. Now in Southeast Asia in the Pacific Islands, two formations of the strand vegetation are commonly associated with sandy beaches, namely this Pescapre formation and Barringtonia formation. Now this is the Pesca Preformation composed of low herbaceous plants comprising mostly of the creepers on accreting um, beaches with gentle slopes. Examples would be the species of Cannavale Maritima and then the other uh, Ipumea Pesca Pre or also known as the goat creeper. The other is the Barringtonia Formation where you have here the lower parts of the trees could be reached by tidal waters and extreme periods and dominated by large sized trees as well. So included would be your Barringtonia, also known as Bulubitoon, and you can show here on the picture would be a large Barringtonia tree in Kiamba in Sarangani and a much bigger tree in Barangay Iligiligan in Yapak in Boracay. Take note that these are large trees and are very, very old already. Now, Pajimins in 1976 classified the beach forest species into five morphological groupings based on their sequential appearance from the lower portion of the beach to the upper portion. One is we have the herbaceous beach. We have the beach scrub, 
we have the beech woodland, the beech agoho, and the mixed littoral forest. We, this is the portion where we have the creepers, and the creepers are very good in terms of holding the sand here. That is why they are at the forefront, and they're usually the pioneer species, and they should never be removed from that portion of the beach. Second would be the beach scrub. The beach shrubs are the low shrubs and then uh, low trees. Exemplified here would be your Clerodendron inermi, also known as the sorcerer's bush. But by the way, this has proven to be possessing some antipyretic and anti-pain uh, properties. The third group would be the beach woodland. These are uh, composed of the wide crown low trees, exemplified here by your telisai, also known as the sea almond or terminalia catapa. Then the other group here would be composed of the beach agoho. Oftentimes people mistake this to be a pine tree, but this is not a pine tree because this is a flowering plant. And this is the Casuarina equisitifolia. And usually they could also be a common pioneer species. However, they are also allelopathic and they could ward off other plants from growing near them. Then the last group on the upper portion would be the mixed littoral forest. It's composed of climbers now, abundant palms, and small trees. And examples would be your Cervera mangas, or the sea mango, then with Premna ceratifolia, and the familiar, perhaps, the pandan. Now, because of the harsh conditions of the environment, plants develop morphological adaptations to survive this area. And as mentioned earlier, that the area is highly stressful, but yet plants are growing. And because over time, they have evolved to develop these adaptations. Now, what are these morphological adaptations now of the beech forest species? One is that some species will have thick, slender leaves like your tumbleweed. Unfortunately, many of these are gone already, again, because of developments into residential, commercial, and even resorts. Then some species will have a thickened cuticle. Thickened cuticle would be to reduce the loss of water from the insides of the plant. So exemplified here would be your sea lily or the crinum uh, asiaticum. Then we have Sephora tomentosa. Uh, this plant, in fact, your crinum is now being used as an ornamental plant. And many of our resources, particularly your resource along the coastal areas. Then we have those species that have low growing habit, but obviously because of the, they are the frontliners also, they have to adjust to the wind direction that blows towards the land so that eventually they will have the low creeping habit to allow them to proliferate in that particular area of the beach. And by the way, uh, example would be your Cannavalia maritima, and this particular species is now being used um, in agriculture in some parts of in India. Unfortunately, in the Philippines, we have not reached or tapped this particular resource. Then we have those species that have small, gnarled, or knobby, rough and twisted forms, like your Helitropium fortarianum. This one is found in the Karamoan Islands in Camarin Sur, and we also have this in Boracay. But these are very few species or, or number of this it's quite diminishing already in many of our coastal areas. There are those species also that have developed multiple stems, exemplified by your tabigi, also known as the Silocarpus trumphi, or the cedar mangrove, or the piagao also. Now, interestingly, the species of this uh, group are some of them have possessed the characteristics of what we call the R-selected species. Characteristics of which include they have wide dispersal by water and they are having early reproduction and the relatively smaller in size. And because of these characteristics, they are quick to colonize these very unstable environments like those shifting beach fronts. The other group can, can fall under what we call the case selected species, having a long life expectancy and large size. So exemplified by your Barringtonia species, your Talisai, your Terminalia catapa, the Bitaog, or the Calophyllum inophyllum. And 
These are ideal species for lowland reforestation because they have a wider altitudinal distribution. Now, so what are now the general functions of the beach forest? So we look, we look at the beach forest as a system. So we are talking now of its emergence functions. So one of these includes a protection against storm surges or the bioshield function. So we have seen already the damage caused by the strong typhoons that hit the Philippines in the last 10 years. And again, the majority of the problems could be linked to the absence of these natural barriers like the mangroves and the beach forest. Such that if you look at this pristine beach forest area compared with an area denuded or devoid of its beach forest protection. So during Typhoon uh, Frank, uh, Typhoon Kendong Peping, and Typhoon uh, Kiara in 2011 exposed the vulnerabilities of many of our coastal areas. And again, it is the question of the urgency of restoring what we call our beach forest and the mangroves for coastal protection. Kiwan is one of the, in fact, the worst hit area when Typhoon Yolanda landed in the Philippines. An area here shown in the picture is supposedly an area where you will have the mangroves and then the beach forest. But instead, we have houses here, mostly informal settlers. So when Yolanda hit Giwan, it devastated the entire area. It simply swept everything along its path. Now, that's why we have been calling for the restoration of the protective green belts even before Yolanda hit the Philippines by restoring these two important groups, the mangroves, intertidal, and what we call the supertidal beach forest. Now, based on simulations and observations, mangroves are known and reported to cause a reduction in wind and swell weights by 13 to 66 percent per 100 meters. It could even go up to as high as 50 to 99 percent per 500 meters of reduction. So the presence of more the roots in here would be very important in attenuating the wave action. Now, in addition, mangroves are also reported and have been demonstrated to be effective in preventing and reducing storm surge height reduction from 5 to 50 centimeter per kilometer of mangrove. And that is why we need to have the restoration of the green belt. It's composed of the mangroves and the beach forest. So together, they provide this with what we call the bioshield function, protection against storm surges and other or the even extraordinary swell, swells of waves during uh, typhoon season. This is a picture showing you one of the surviving species of the beach forest in Estancia. And imagine if our coastal areas are lined with the species. It could have afforded the protection to the communities around the area. Now, the second function would be prevention of coastal erosion. Because of the removal of this, we see now this familiar site in many of our coastal areas, the continued erosion. Everywhere we see this problem. The other function is the aspect on the cultural and historical values. It's one, in fact, of the ecosystem services. Look at the flowers here. These are beautiful flowers that are just there. In fact, people must simply ignore them, perhaps. In fact, many of our cities and towns and villages in the Philippines are named after a beach forest species. And in fact, numerous local names for many beach flora. And again, a reflection of the wide distribution of the species all over the archipelago. Example would be your Barringtonia, locally known as Bulubitoon. So we have Barangay Bitoon Haro in Iloilo City. Bitoon in the Anbandayan and Cebu, and Botong in Quezon. Then we have Talisay, Terminalia Catapa, and we have Talisay Negros, or Occidental, Talisay in Cebu, Talisay in Bohol, Talisay in Camarines Norte, and Talisay in Batangas. Then we have your Talipariti Taliasium, 
a common name is Miss Banago, and so many. If you notice, there are so many common names for this particular species again, showing this widely abundant all over the Philippines. And in fact, we have many places named after this particular species here. Balabago Haro, Malibago in Southern Leyte, Malibago on Cebu, Mac in Lapu-Lapu, Malibago in Batangas, and another uh, is the common name, Kalambugahan in Cagayan de Oro City. This is a relative of your familiar Gumamela. We observe also that there is a reduction in the number of reported local names from older to the more recent publications. Again, perhaps a reflection of the disappearance of this beach species over time. Like, we also have a case, for example, of Hispanization of local names. Vitex parviflora is known as Tugas or Mulawan. Later on, it's now known as Mulave. Again, perhaps the difficulty of the Spaniards to pronounce the name Mulawan. Actually, it's pronounced Mulawan. So it's now more popularly known as Mulave. The other extreme is what I call the bastardization of local names. Example would be your Kananga Odorata, uh, locally called Kananga. Perhaps you're familiar with this. The other local name is Alangilan. And again, perhaps the Spaniards have difficulty pronouncing the name, and Alangilan became Ilang Ilang. Now, the other species have epithets that have been, you know, reflective of the site where the first species was collected, like Ixora Filipinensis, Delinea Siboyanensis, or Rythia Palawanensis, again. Suggesting, of course, that the first specimen or the type species could have been collected from these areas. Now, on uses and utilization. Now, the beach forest is our the original boutique ng barangay for the Philippines. A drugstore, a hardware rolled into one, where all the needs of the barangay folks and our ancestors were derived from. That is a caveat. This illustrates that some of these uses have been tested in the lab particularly on the reported folkloric uses, and many are simply anecdotal. So traditional folkloric medicine is a long list, from cough, fever, asthma, toothache, all the way to even breast cancer. And many of these plants are being investigated now in the laboratory. Now, another interesting plant is Mirinda citrifolia. It's considered to be a ghost medicine because they claim that it could ward off non-earthly beings, but believe me, even earthly beings can be warned off by this because of the awful smell. But uh, interestingly also, this plant was the source of the very famous noni juice when it became a fad years ago. As food, a source for carbohydrates, for daily meals, when food stuff, for inter-island and oceanic villages a long time ago. Your pandanus tictorius fruit, your taka, leontipo, the Leon Topitaloides, also known as Tayubong. Uh, locally in Iloilo, in Panay, we call this Tayubong. And Tayubong was used as a starch to, uh, for clothes. But with the advent of the introduction of the corn starch, I'm happy that this was spared from total extinction from the wild. And we still have this, a very important resource. Then, of course, who doesn't know how to eat coconut? Cocos nucifera. But maybe the seeds of cycas is another interesting food item. And even the bukanania or what we call the, the uh, pasi, the fruits can be eaten fresh or preserved as pickles and jams. Then the fruits of the spirus can be eaten also as fresh or again preserved as pickles and jam. And one very interesting species is the sea purslane, also known as Sisuvium portulocastrum that could be served as green salad. If you have nothing to eat in the field, you can eat this one. Then we have other species like your Melissa piñata or Dabani, and your Sophora or uh, Tambelisa are used as fodder for livestock. Others are used for wrapping for fish that gives a distinctive flavor for fish. Then to illustrate the uses of the beach forest, for in terms of their wood products. Uh, this is only for historical documentation, not recommended to harvest the remaining stands of the beach forest that we have. In particular, like your Tispicia popolnea, 
look at the grains of the woodworks beautiful. Then, of course, the very familiar, popular mulave, from which many of our antique items are made from, especially our antique uh, santuses. And they're very expensive today. Now, we also have the non timber, like a source for dye, like cisalpinia. The cisalpinia, or your, um, we call that as our uh, sibukao. And the Japanese, even before the war, has already produced an array of colors from the dye from the sap of this uh, sibukao. Then we have also the oil that we get from the seeds of the very uh, foul smelling tree the Sterculia fitida, and the fruits can also be used as decorations later. Then, of course, the leaves of coconut that's uh, commonly used as a touching materials. And we have also the grass skirts, although we don't have this in the Philippines, but the grass skirts have, are produced from the plant called Flagellaria indica. Then we have the more modern industrial applications. We have productions of biodegradable plastics from sago stars, biofuels from Melissa Pinata or Dobani, and bath care products from Premna or Dorata. The other uses include interesting amulets. They've been reported to be used as an amulet well, for the thorny twigs of the Cisalpinia bundo. Or again, I don't know if some of you here have tried making this into the you know, toys, the leaves of coconut. Then we also have a fish source for fish poisons, like a barringtonia, uh, commonly used again in coastal areas. Then we even have poisons from the Cerbera, uh, can use for suicide and homicide. In fact, this is also known as the suicide tree, uh, because the study in Kerala, India, showed that more than 500 women who were dug up, uh, the cadavers were found to have common in their, in, in their stomach, the presence of the seeds of this plant. So in other words, they're, well, it's believed that their mother-in-law were poisoning those women. Okay, then we have another source of poison, uh, Abrus Precatorius. I, I don't know if you recall the movie Blue Lagoon a long time ago. This was the bear that they used, and then they, they ate that, and then they died. Then we have other products that we get, personal hygiene products, toothbrush, etc., all the way to toilet paper, and you know how it is. Then we have uh, perfumes or flavors like the flowers of pandan, pandanus, and the beautiful flowers of the sea lettuce, also known as kivola takada. Then garlands. Then we have, again here, as mentioned earlier, the seeds of this uh, Sterculia ceramica and even Sterculia fitida. It's being used for massage, but the fruit itself, the cover itself, is also being made used into a decor. But in the Philippines, people would use them rather as a firewood. And of course, if you have nothing to make for Christmas, you can make some of this into your Christmas decoration. All right? But we don't recommend that. Then some, uh, again, the same species can be used for, as a source for gunpowder. Earlier, I mentioned about the beach area as a very inhospitable, stressful. And one of the important characteristics is that the soil is very much low in nitrogen. Now, if you look at the composition of the families based on our research, of the many families found in the beach forest, the family of the Fabaceae has the highest number of representatives. The members of the family Fabaceae are nitrogen fixtures. And they have the ability to fix free nitrogen and because of the presence of the nitrogen fixing bacteria such that they're able to thrive in abundance in this harsh environment. That's why the Fabaceae has the highest number of species among the many species found in this area. And now, to show some other examples of the beach forest, we have Alstonia macrophylla, or known as the Batino or Itang Itang. You also have the Alstonia scolaris also known as the devil's tree. Then we have your antidisma gamebisilia. This is, by the way, the fruits are edible, also known as inium, or black currant in English. The beautiful flowers of Erdisia, uh, seashore Erdisia, Panghas or Tagpo. Then we have the familiar, maybe, 
uh, breadfruit, artocarpus blancoi, this again, of course, edible. The Cisalpinia bondo, the knicker nut, also known as the lugdog. Then the calophyllum, minophyllum, these are huge trees, large size diameter, with beautiful flowers. Common name is palumaria. And we call here here in Panay as Dangkalan. Or in English, it's called laurel wood. Then we have this Caparis micrachanta. This one is edible. Okay? Has a promise to become uh, useful in our uh, coastal areas and maybe can be propagated. Again, this is your pink eyed cerbera, the same mango. Uh, then the other type is the yellow eyed cerbera, also known as a suicide tree. And if you compare the two, species can be compared easily or quickly by the presser, the difference in the color of the center. One has red, the other one is yellow. Oh, that's a, an easier way to distinguish the two species. Now, another interesting species is Comersonia bartramia, also known as the scrub Christmas. And we notice that they actually grow or bear flowers towards Christmas time in the coastal areas. Then we have another beautiful flowers of the Quardia subcordata. This is our, your known as the sea trumpet or the banalo or agutot. Then we have our, we can also call this our native sakura, Trativa religiosa, okay? or balay lamo, or salimbubo. Then we have Cratoxylin formosum. This one is known as the Singapore sakura, ulingon or uh, salingugon. Then another, the Crotoxylum somatranum, another with beautiful flowers. Then the Delinea sibuyanensis, Catmoon uh, sibuyan. Then if you want to know more about the beach forest species in the Philippines, feel free to get a copy of the two books that we published. One was released in 2012, then the revised and updated with additional species released in 2017. Thank you very much for listening.